video, we're going to learn about some different ways of editing text. So the first thing that you need to do is open Photoshop and either click Create New up here or you can go to File, New. I'm going to use this uh, way over here because it gives me some options to start off my document with. So I'm going to push Create New and I get this window. I'm going to go up here where it's at the very top and choose Web and then choose Web Most Common. Then over here on the right, I'm going to go ahead and name my file. I'm going to go, this is a, oh, so you put your name, dash Kerning. And just make sure you have a white background there. And say Create. And here's our artboard. I'm going to do Control Plus to zoom in a little bit. You can do Control Minus to zoom out. And you can use the space bar to move your window around. All right, so the first thing you need to do is make sure that you have the correct workspace. So go to Window, Workspace, and make sure it says Essentials Default. I'm going to reset mine so you can see what it looks like the first time you start. When you first start, it gives you a lot of things that you might not need over here. So to close some of these tabs, just go over here and say Close Tab Group. And you can leave the rest of these. It's just that you didn't need that libraries on the right. All right, now when we're working with text, we want to make sure that we have the window open that um, lets you edit text. We have properties here, and when I click on the text tool, it gives me some options to edit the text up here. It also gives me uh, some options to edit it over here, but I want you to open up the window called Character. So go to Window, Character. And when you have that open, it gives you all the parameters that you need to edit your text. This is your font right here. This is your size of your font. And we're going to be working with these other little um, areas here. And here's the color. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, type our first word. You want to just take your text tool and click on the artboard. And it's going to give you some type of fake text in there. And just type right over it. I'm going to use all caps and type the word kerning because that's the first definition we're going to learn about. After you type something, you can press this check mark. Now the first time you type something, it's probably going to be a different color and different size and different font. It doesn't matter because you can change it here. So I want you to change the size of the font, which is right here. Just drag the cursor over that and put 125 and then press enter on your keyboard. All right, and you can change it to any color you want. If you click here, you can change the colors. I'm going to leave mine on blue and then say OK. And let's get the Move tool, which is right here at the very top, and move your word kerning kind of up here in the center. I'm actually going to change the font too, so let me show you how to do that. Up here where it says Arial Black, I'm going to change mine to Impact. I think that's a good font to use for this assignment so choose impact now notice how when I typed this layer this text it became a layer over here so here's my layers tab the word Kearney's on a separate layer so you can always edit everything individually when it's on a different layer alright let's continue so you can see what I mean I'm gonna get the text tool and this time when I click on the artboard it's gonna, gonna give me the same size color and text that I used before. I'm going to change that, but for now you can go ahead and leave it and type. Let's undo the ca all caps now. Now I know you can't see that because the text is too big, so let's click this check mark, which means we're done typing. Then go over here to our character panel and let's make the size a lot smaller. Let's put like 48. All right, and then let's get the move tool and move it like that. All right, now you see that the new line of text that we typed is on its own layer. So we have kerning on this layer and the definition of kerning on this layer. Now what I want you to do is go back to the kerning um, layer Let's move it down a little bit more, and now let's actually adjust the kerning on this word. So back to the text tool. Once again, make sure you're on the kerning layer. Just click the cursor in between the K and the E, right there, so you have that blinking line. 
that means that you have that space selected. Now we can actually adjust the kerning, which is the space between the two letters. So if you go over here to your character panel, and you see where this V slash A is, if you hover your mouse over there, it tells you set the kerning between two characters. So where it says metrics right there, we're going to change that. So I'm going to click this, and I want you to put negative 100. Now you can see it made those letters really close together. Now let's do the kerning in between these two letters. This time go over here and make it a positive 100. And that made the space bigger. So the negative number made the letters closer together. The positive number gave it extra space. And then let's press check. All right, so that's all you need to do for the kerning one, except I do want you to write your name on all these. So click on the bottom, and type your name, click the check mark, and obviously we can make this a lot smaller. I'm just going to put 30 for my point size, and then get the move tool and drag it over here to the corner. So you need to save your work, so go File, Save. And if you wrote your name in the beginning of the file, it'll already be there, so you don't need to do anything. It says Photoshop, yes, we want our layers. Say Save. Okay, and then you need to save a JPEG too, so go Save As, and then go where it says Format, choose JPEG. There's several JPEGs, just pick the first one. Notice how it gave me the, work, the uh, extension JPEG. Press Save. Yes, I want to replace it because it's a new one. You can leave this on all the default settings for now and say OK. And then the JPEG is, you need to upload these to your Google Drive, and you're going to put this JPEG on one of your pages in your Google Slide portfolio.